It's time again for African Folk Tale Theater Today, Episode 8, The Lion, the Hare, and the Hyena. I'm Mr. McCoy, your host. A lion named Simba once lived alone in a cave. In his younger days, the solitude had not worried him. But not very long before this tale begins, he had hurt his legs so badly that he was unable to provide food for himself. Eventually, he began to realize that companionship had its advantages. Things would have gone very badly for him had not Sanguro the hare happened to be passing his cave one day. Looking inside, Sanguro realized that the lion was starving. He set about at once caring for his sick friend and seeing to his comfort. Under the hare's careful nursing, Simba gradually regained his strength until finally he was well enough to catch small game for the two of them to eat. Soon, quite a large pile of bones began to accumulate outside the entrance to the lion's cave. One day, Nyanga the hyena, while sniffing around in the hope of scrounging something for his supper, caught the appetizing smell of marrow bones. His nose led him to Simba's cave, but as the bones could be seen clearly from inside, he could not steal them with safety. Being a cowardly fellow like the rest of his kind, he decided that the only way to gain possession of the tasty morsels would be to make friends with Simba. He therefore crept up to the entrance of the cave and gave a cough. <coughs> Who makes the evening hideous with his dreadful croakings? Demanded the lion, rising to his feet and preparing to investigate the noise. It is I, your friend Nyanga, faltered the hyena, losing what little courage he possessed. I have come to tell you how sadly you have been missed by the animals and how greatly we are looking forward to your return, your early return, to good health. Well, get out, growled the lion, for it seems to me that a friend would have inquired about my health long before this, instead of waiting until I could be of use to him once more. Get out, I say. The hyena shuffled off with alacrity, his scruffy tail tucked between his bandy legs, followed by the insulting giggles of the hare but he could not forget the pile of tempting bones outside the entrance to the lion's cave. I shall try again, resolved the thin-skinned hyena. A few days later, he made a point to paying his visit while the hare was away fetching water to cook the evening meal. He found the lion dozing at the entrance to his cave. Friend, simpered Nyanga, I am led to believe that the wound on your leg is making poor progress due to the underhanded treatment that you are receiving from your so-called friend, Sanguru. What do you mean, snarled the lion malevolently. I have to thank Sanguru that I did not starve to death during the worst of my illness while you and your companions were conspicuous by your absence. Nevertheless, what I have told you is true, confided the hyena. It is well known throughout the countryside that Sanguru is purposely giving you the wrong treatment for your wound to prevent your recovery. For when you are well, he will lose his position as your housekeeper, a very comfortable living for him to be sure. Let me warn you, good friend, that Sunguru is not acting in your best interests. At that moment, the hare returned from the river with his gourd filled with water. Well, he said, addressing the hyena as he put down his load, I did not expect to see you here after your hasty and inglorious departure from our presence the other day. Tell me, what do you want this time? Simba turned to the hare. I have been listening, he said, to Nyanga's tales about you. He tells me that you are renowned throughout the countryside for your skill and cunning as a doctor. He also tells me that the medicines you prescribe are without rival. But he insists that you could have cured the wound on my leg a long time ago had it been in your interest to do so. Is this true? Sanguru thought for a moment. He knew that he had to treat this situation with care, for he had a strong suspicion that Nyanga was trying to trick him. Well, he answered with hesitation, yes and no. You see, I am only a very small animal, and sometimes the medicines that I require are very big, and I am unable to procure them. 
As for instance, in your case, good Simba. What do you mean, spluttered the lion, sitting up and at once showing interest. Just this, replied the hare. I need a piece of skin from the back of a full-grown hyena to place on your wound before it will be completely healed. Hearing this, the lion sprang on to Nyanga before the surprised creature had time to get away. Tearing a strip of skin off the foolish fellow's back from his head to his tail, he clapped it on the wound on his leg. As the skin came away from the hyena's back, so the hairs that remained stretched and stood on end. To this day, Nyanga and his kind still have long, coarse hair standing up on the crests of their misshapen bodies. Sunguru's fame as a doctor spread far and wide after this episode for the wound on Simba's leg healed without further trouble. But it was many weeks before the hyena had the courage to show himself in public again. What would you say is the central message or the theme of this African folktale? Share with your fellow listeners. And when next we gather, it will be episode nine, The Hare and the Tree Spirit. Be sure you're present. It will be a magnificent adventure.